Keishi represents desire for respect. Hmm. Desire for respect. That's an obstacle in our hearts for advancing in our relationship with Krishna and accessing the pure holy name to develop further our relationship with Krishna. There's um, just a scriptural reference, one of many, is um, Madhurya Kandambini, which is a book by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, which he outlines the nine stages of bhakti. And in the chapter that deals with Anartha Navriti, which is the eradication of impure things in the heart. He says, Vishwanath says that there is different sources and the Anarthas are analyzed according and categorized according to the sources from which they arise. So there's Anarthas that arise from past sins. The good news is you chant Hare Krishna. And the, the potency of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra is such it can dismiss all those. Then another one, it's a little more curious, is an artist that arise from one past piety. Hmm. The past piety ones are one takes shelter of the fruits of piety and feels proud. I'm wealthy, I'm beautiful, I have knowledge, and I have the capacity to learn many things due to the fruits of my piety. And that obscures one's relationship with Krishna. The good news is the chanting of Hare Krishna can eradicate that tendency also, fortunately. And then the third is those <coughs> impurities of heart that arise from offense. So fortunately, even offense in devotional service can be eradicated by the chanting of the holy name of Krishna unless we make offense against the holy name. So that's where the large part of the discussion of that chapter goes. But even if one makes a little progress, then there's another anartha category. Look out. It's the anartha that arises in the heart due to having made a little success in spiritual life. I'm still chanting after so many years. And look at the titles that I have and the honor that I get and the respect that I get. And That's an anartha in the heart. The, the language in Sanskrit is labha, puja, and pratishta. You, you, to get some recognition, to get some title, to get some worship or some praise and some appreciation. And those who are eager for that, that's an anartha in the heart. And Keshi represents that. Here's another scriptural reference. In the 18th chapter, the last chapter of Bhagavad Gita, the first verse, of that last chapter, look it up later. What is the name by which Krishna addresses, excuse me, Arjuna addresses Krishna? Keshi. Keshi Nisudana. Oh, remover of the tendency in my heart for wanting honor, for pride, whenever I get some, whatever something comes my way. Oh, Krishna, who is the remover of that tendency? Because he's already received so much from Krishna. He's, you know, his doubts have been removed and his contaminations have been cleansed and he's back in, you know, in a good position now. Now the tendency for some pride, desire for respect. And when one desires respect... This material tendency thing of asserting my superiority. And there's so many different ways that people posture themselves and lots of varieties. That's Keshi, that tendence, tendency. 
And then the, the alternative is there. Though that it's the nature of pride and envy. Those that are actually qualified, I've got some, something in my heart towards them. That's Keshi. And that tendency is not, it's not just like over there. It's over here. <laughs> it's one of the things that I wanted to share. All of these things that are sharing, of course, it can be just like information that goes in one ear and out the other, oh, that was nice, what's next? It can be one of those. Or it could be, gee, I wish everybody else could get this message. <laughs> they really need this message. <laughs> That's another tendency. Please don't make that mistake. It, it's, you know, it's over here. This message is for, for, for me, not, it's not just, I'm here giving you a message because you guys need it. it I need this message too. We, you know, we're here to assist one another in Krishna consciousness, whoever is speaking, whoever is listening. It's the same purification opportunity. Um, there's this saying, pride goeth before the fall. If uh, a, a very nice devotee couple shared with me, they asked, Naranjan Maharaj was staying at their home for like some peace and quiet for a change. And the, the husband asked Naranjan Maharaj, why is it that some devotees, very senior devotees, rose to such levels of incredibly wonderful devotional service and did so much and were so effective and and then they like just disappeared they crashed why is that and he said Narendra said I want to think about this and I want to just give you a you know quick answer and two days later he said pride Pride goeth before the fall. So may you all become successful and may you not become proud. May you all become successful. But don't forget Keshi. <laughs> and the protection against Keshi is Keshi Nasudana, Krishna. Now the Kuvera and Manigriva, they became proud. We're sons of Kuvera. And Kuvera is very special devotee of Lord Shiva. And so we're very special on the credential of our father. They became proud. Narada very kindly removed their pride. And then they became humble. And then they became pure devotees. Actually, they became pure devotees. They were delivered by Krishna. When they went back to their position as the sons of Kuvera after living as a tree for quite a while, they went back to that position, but they were no longer, you know, just sons of Kuvera. They were pure devotees. Krishna delivered them from that tendency of heart. And Daksha, what we're reading in the morning, he was proud. And one of his issues with Lord Shiva was, I'm better than him. Look at him. But I won't say the things that he said because they're offensive. He's this and he's that and he's the other thing. And I'm better than him. Why is he being honored more than me? Because when he had his yagya, he invited his brother-in-law, his son-in-law, who was actually... Well, he, 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 Lord Shiva had married Daksha's daughter, but Lord Shiva was the elder brother of Lord Shiva, both sons of Brahma. So when Daksha entered the assembly, everyone stood. Daksha has arrived. Lord Shiva didn't stand. He's the elder brother, and by social custom and by spiritual qualification, he's vastly superior. Daksha lost it <laughs> because of the pride in his heart and he lost more than his temperament. He lost his head. 
literally. It's such a debilitating quality. Now, that's the bad news. The good news is, Krishna is very kind. And if we take shelter in a mood, starting with, as we were discussing yesterday, with humility, um, Krishna will take that away. If we desire respect from others, so, cause, I desire respect and honor from others. Lava, puja, pratishta. I've been a little successful in my devotional service. I'm now a pujari, or I can cook so many nice things, or I can sing so nicely, or whatever I can do. I know so many slokas. I know this, and I'm that, and I've got this title and that title. Look at me desiring some honor from others. Madhavendra Puri was just the opposite. When he got the special favor of Gopinath, Chirakoro Gopinath, who stole the pot of sweet rice because he wanted to taste it for his Diti Gopal, when the Pujari in the middle of the night went into the marketplace to find him, on the one hand, Madhavendra Puri was so amazingly appreciative of the kindness of Gopinath. He not only ate the sweet rice, he saved the pot so we could eat the pot. Broke it into pieces and tied it in his cloth and then left in the middle of the night because he didn't want people coming to honor him. When most people would... Yeah, <laughs> Let me hang around and, you know, have people appreciate. Not Madhavendra Puri. Not Madhavendra Puri. Then our acharyas say the nature of a, a, a devotee or living entity is their reputation follows them. You've heard that before. So when he, by the time he reached Puri, word had already gotten Puri. They, they didn't. People send text messages and emails. It just somehow before he got there, they already knew Madhavendra Puri is such a great recipient of the mercy of Gopinath. So all the doors were open to him and the purpose of going there, getting sandalwood and camphor for Gopal back in Vrindavan. Immediately everything was arranged and people to carry it and money to, so they could pass through the toll collector's booths and protect him as he was traveling with this valuable stuff. That's Madhavendra Puri. But people that aren't on that platform, they want. So when you want, that's the cause, wanting honor. There's an effect. Two effects. One, pride arises. This is repeating. It's just like, so it's clear. Pride arises in the heart. I have this little something. People should honor this little something. Honor me for this little something that I have. It, was, it came from Krishna. That's one thing pride. And then the other is those who are actually qualified well, I, I'm a little uncomfortable with those that are actually qualified. And so I start finding reasons why they're not so qualified. I become a fault finder. And that's an effect. And that effect becomes then the cause of the next thing. What starts finding issues with Krishna. It's actually behind it all is a, a problem <clears throat> in our relationship with Krishna. It's why we're in the material world to begin with, by the way, as we have an attitude towards the all-attractive supreme personality of Godhead. That's our misfortune. But it manifests <clears throat> in this way. <clears throat> so Krishna kills the Keshi demon